So there we have it, the cat is finally out of the proverbial bag. Battlefield 6, as everybody was calling it, is in fact Battlefield 20. 42. Yes, this is taking inspiration from the old PC game Battlefield 2142 by bringing this roughly into the future by about 20 years. Uh, and with that, we're going to move away from World War One, World War Two, and the old weapons and into the near future where we're going to get a host of new weaponry. We're going to get helicopters back and we're going to get a very interesting story. And the scene is set for this one. It's 2042. The world is on the brink. There's shortages of food, energy, water and um, failed nations all over the place, which we're kind of seeing happening already and now we have a group of people called the non-patriated or the no-pats and these are families farmers engineers and even soldiers and amidst this crisis in the world uh, the united states and russia have drawn the world into an all-out war and the no-pats these specialists have joined both sides and they're not fighting for the flag they're fighting for the future of the non-patriated in this new world so it's an exciting new take on uh, f countries fighting each other and uh, we're going to see some fantastic massive gameplay here these are the biggest maps you've ever seen in a battlefield game on next gen hardware uh, you're going to actually see 128 players playing multiplayer there's no single player in this one so this is multiplayer against pvp or you can do multiplayer uh, against ai as well or a mix of both so that's going to be very interesting also there's going to be brand new hardware brand new gadgets and we'll go through some of them in a second so battlefield 2042 is going to launch with seven maps and i presume if they said launch that means more will be added as the game comes out let's go over some of those maps now so we've got kaleidoscope that's set in sogdo south korea here you've got forces clashing to take control of a quantum powered disinformation hub after an attack threatens the global network that all looks really cool and we've got manifest that's set in branny island singapore and here you have a strategic flashpoint emerge as global trade chokes this location, which is vital for the American supply lines. Uh, Orbital looks really fun. This is set in French Guiana and this is over um, uh, the fight is over a rocket launch here um, as a controversial space launch becomes a race against time. Now that rocket, we talked about dynamic events, that rocket at some point in the level and the map will take off. If you remember Levolution in Battlefield 4, it's kind of like that. It will change the environment. Sometimes it takes off okay, and sometimes it doesn't go according to plan. So that's going to be a really interesting thing to experience when you jump into that for the first time. Or of course, any time. The fact this is a sandbox game means lots of things can happen that aren't exactly scripted, which is going to be a lot of fun. Um, the uh, fourth map to talk about is Discarded. That is set in Alang, India. Uh, here we'll see some shipbreakers facing tidal extremes as the factions fight to secure rogue nuclear assets. We've got Renewal, that's set in the eastern desert in Egypt, and players will fight for a groundbreaking agriculture technology centre in the Egyptian desert. We've got Hourglass, that's going to be set in Doha in Qatar, where you're going to have, I guess, sandstorms and a lost shipping convoy tearing a city apart. So that's going to be really a lot of fun. Uh, we did see sandstorms again in previous Battlefield games, but this one in next gen is going to look stunning when a wall of sand comes towards you. And then we've got Breakaway, that's set in uh, Queen Maud Land, Antarctica. And that's going to see people struggling over oil and gas uh, that pushes players to the brink on an industrial clash uh, with nature and ice giving way as well. So plenty of evolution in those. Uh, worth bearing in mind as well that one of these maps also is going to have a, as we see in the trailer, a huge tornado that's going to come in at some point. So we do have these dynamic weather effects and that is going to rip everything apart. So those maps really exciting now let's talk about some of the characters in here now what they've done here sort of taking on the uh, the apex legends vibe that instead of just these being soldiers that are classes they've actually got specialists instead so these guys they had the guys they have specific loadouts uh they have specific training as well and fully customizable loadouts and they've got a bit of a personality as well uh, the game's going to launch uh, with 10 specialists and they've announced four one of them is uh casper he's the recon class um, his place of birth is South Africa um, and uh, yeah he has a speciality he's got an OVP recon drone that can actually uh, move and stay in position and watch a bit like uh, we've seen with crypto in Apex um, and he's also got a movement sensor as well so that might mean if he's sniping for instance it could be that if someone's trying to sneak up behind him he can get the jump on them and uh, stand up and maybe get his pistol out uh, so he doesn't get killed while he's looking through his scope uh, we've also got Webster Mackay, who's born in Canada. This is an assault class 
They've got a grappling hook, so I guess that's going to be a bit similar to Pathfinder, be able to get to uh, higher locations very quickly. And also a trait, Nimble, uh, which I presume might be either being uh, fast or sneaky, which would be interesting. Uh, we've got Maria Falk here. Uh, her birthplace is Germany. She's a support class. Um, she has a trait of being a combat surgeon, so I guess that's kind of a, a bit like a, a lifeline where she'll be able to heal people quickly or... Uh, or do some other cool things around being a medic and she's always got also got this s it's called the s21 surette pistol so um that's her speciality not sure what you do with it but uh, that's maria falk and lastly uh, my favorite one we've got boris uh Pyotr boris guskovsky hope i said that right of course he's from russia he's an engineer he has a sentry gun so we're talking again i do play a lot of apex uh, we're talking a kind of rampart ability here put that down tear through everything and his trait is sentry operator so with him it's all about that sentry gun and being able to put a lot of heavy ordnance into the fight Let's talk a bit about the weapons and vehicles. So helicopters are back, as we can see in the trailer here, as well as tuk-tuks and other things like that, which is gonna be really, really cool. And um, every seat, when you get into a vehicle, will take on a vital role. So you won't just be a passenger. Uh, you've got anti-air seats, spotter seats, gunner type seats. Uh, and so the more players that occupy a vehicle, the more opportunities a squad will have within that vehicle in order to uh, win that current battle they're in. Another great improvement which I've seen is the plus system. Now here, uh, instead of being into a fight and realizing you're actually got the, completely the wrong weapons, you could be a sniper and you suddenly end up in a close combat situation. Using the plus system, you will actually be able to slightly modify the weapons you have in order to suit the um, situation around you. For instance, you might be able to change the barrel out or the mag type, that kind of thing. It's not going to completely change your weapon from, say, uh, you know, a close quarter shotgun to a sniper, but it will give you a slight variation uh, of the way you do that. Uh, the way that would work is a plus system comes over your gun and then you can switch that. I presume on, um, on PC, you're going to press a button and just use the mouse to click. On the console, likely, it's probably something like a bumper and then you'll just use the D-pad to move around the, the up, down, left, right on there. But that's certainly exciting, something that um, needs, needed to be added to Battlefield because I certainly found myself sometimes thinking I need to respawn uh, before I can actually get into the game as I want to play. Now, uh, post-launch uh, on Battlefield 2042, there will be a battle pass for each season uh, and that will include both free and premium tiers. So if you're into your battle royales, good to know that is there. Uh, so that's going to keep the community excited, obviously, and mean uh, it'll keep people playing so they can earn rewards uh, for playing. And then um, each season also, uh, that will push a narrative of the world forward as well. So this game isn't going to stagnate. There will be narratives within those seasons just to keep things fresh. Uh, there's going to be four seasons in that first year with four battle passes. There'll be four new specialists and new locations as well, along with fresh new content. Right, so what is next with Battlefield? Well, um, in early July, they're going to have a technical play test, um, which is exciting. So um, some um, Battlefield veterans are going to be able to play uh, in the US and Europe, and they'll be invited to those closed um, play tests under NDA. Um, so that's going to be really cool for those guys to really sort of finesse the game. Obviously, they, they've mostly been working from home, and this game is out in October. So that's going to be really essential. Um, in July, uh, there's also going to be um, a play on July the 22nd, and they're going to get a first look of the multiplayer experience. So that's going to be when uh, you can see people uh, playing that, I guess, multiplayer live, uh, rather than some of the stuff you've here, seen here in the reveal trailer. Um, Hazard Zone will have a pre-launch. Uh, and that's going to be the um, the high stakes squad based game type uh, I talked about earlier. Uh, it's not a battle royale, we're told. So that will be very interesting to see what that is. High stakes suggests there's some kind of, I don't know, some kind of wager you might put. And, uh, you know, winning or losing means you're um, in an advantageous position or you're really in trouble. And they're going to have an open beta as well. That will be pre launch. Uh, so uh, anyone who pre orders Battlefield 2042 will receive early access to that open beta. Um, so it all looks really exciting. I myself can't wait to play it. Um, as I said, it's gonna be on uh, PC, uh, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. Um, it's gonna be launched on October the 22nd, 2021. 
Um, so that's what, 21 years before the, the actual war takes place. And I myself can't wait for it. But do stay tuned. Uh, do like, subscribe for more Battlefield content. Uh, I, I myself have been playing the game since 1942. Not the actual year, but when the game came out on PC. So I am really looking forward to this one. Uh, one and five, they were kind of okay. But um, three and four were really highlights for me. Um, so I can't wait to get back into this style of gameplay with, uh, you know, helicopters and, and more slightly futuristic weaponry and loadouts. So thanks for your time. That was Battlefield 2042 and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.